Welcome back to EG4 Electronics. I'm Braden, and today I'm going to guide you through the settings, parameters, and how to update your firmware for the EG4 8K EXP. Before we do any of the setup for the firmware or the settings, we need to make sure that our inverter is properly wired and safe. So what we can do is we can check the polarity of our battery bank with a multimeter. We're good to go there. It would also be wise to have a certified electrician check the wiring on your AC side. You also want to make sure that your CTs have the arrow pointing towards the inverter. So this is the grid to inverter connection. You want to have your CTs with the arrow pointing towards the inverter if you follow the wire. That ensures that you're not going to backfeed any power to the grid, even if you have that setting disabled. And last but not least, you want the power from your inverter to be wired to load one. That is the load that will be backed up and powered by the batteries when the grid goes down. Now that we've made sure that our inverter is safely wired, we can move to hooking up our computer to the inverter. And what we'll need is a USB to USB-C cable. We'll plug the USB into our laptop here. And we'll plug our USB-C cable into the inverter right here. We want to make sure and be very safe if your inverter's live. We'll get that in there. Now we're ready to get on our computer and update the firmware. So first things first, we want to go to eg4electronics.com slash downloads. From here, we can scroll down to the EG4 8KW hybrid inverter, and there'll be a firmware button where you can download the latest version. Let's see here. We go to our downloads folder, and we have it right here. We're going to then extract it onto our desktop, and it'll give us this folder right here. In tool setup, there will be a setup.exe. You do want to install this so that way you can open up the software. I've already done so. I'm going to open it now. Alrighty, so it pulls up this little window here. You want to make sure you're on the proper com. There should only be one option here. We want to go to import. And then in that same generator folder, there will be a dot out file. We'll select that dot out file first, and then we'll select upgrade. You'll hear your inverter click off. This is a very quick and easy upgrade. We see we're already halfway done. And there we go. Now, we want to make sure that we import the other file as well. That is very important to make sure that you get both files. So we did the .out file. Now we need to make sure we get the .axf file. So open that in the import. Once it's been selected, make sure you click upgrade. And there we go. We have now uploaded the brand new firmware version to our EG4 8K EXP. You want to make sure that you do that for every inverter in your lineup. Now, if you've already gone ahead and set up your BMS protocol and doing that firmware update gave you an error on the screen, give it about a minute or two and it should resolve itself. And if it seems to be locked up, then what you'll want to do is pull out the communication cable, put it back in, and that'll resolve the issue. Alrighty, so let's get into the settings. First, you want to hit the back button to get to the user page. Click on setup. And it'll ask you to put a password. Now, by default, this should be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Press enter and you're able to get in. So the first thing we want to look at is system settings. Click on work mode. You have various settings here. You want to click on self-consume. That is what most people are going to be using. That is basically solar battery utility priority in that order. So we're going to go self-consume. We want to make sure our EPS is enabled. That keeps us online when the grid goes down. Fat wake up, we'll leave this on disabled. Remote control, if you want to use remote management, then you want to make sure that that's enabled. Otherwise, you can disable it. No harm, no foul. Start delay, not very important. PV input, you want to make sure that this is set on either independent or parallel, depending on your situation. Independent makes the MPPTs operate independently of each other and parallel has them all work together. So uh, you will only go with parallel if your strings are of the same size. CV is uh, not important right now. So I'm going to go on. 
anti-reverse. This is a very important one. It's a little unintuitive. You want to enable it if you don't want power to go back to the grid, and you want to disable it if you do want power back to the grid. So we want to make sure that is enabled so that we're not sending power back. And then we want to go to arc enable, button enable. Those are not important. That's button. You can go to bat settings. Now we want to go to bat type. This is a very important one. If you're using the EG4 batteries, you want to set that to lithium. You want to go down to bat communications. And now this is the question. Are you using the Life Power 4 or the LL? If you're using the Life Power 4, you want to use the RS-485. If you're using the LLV2s, you want to use the CAN. If you happen to have the Life Power 4 communication hub, you can use the CAN settings for this as well. So for Life Power 4, let's select RS-485. Input, we want to make sure that that is on 2. We're good to go there. Go back. Go back. Grid standard, we want to make sure that's set to US and Canada. Grid setting, we want that to be 120 volt by 240 volt. That's the common split phase. If you have a three phase system, then you'll want to set this to 120, 208. And if you happen to only want one leg of 120 volt, then you can set it to 120 volt single. Run setting, not very important. It has a lot of little things you can change, but we're not going to do anything here. We're going to leave that at default. RS-485 address, we're going to leave that as default as well. That is for the Wi-Fi dongle. Baud rate, we want to make sure that this is set to 9600. Language, you'll most likely want English. Backlight, now this is how long your backlight is going to be on. That's a personal preference thing. Uh, you can have it set, uh, I believe, up to 120. Date and time, you want to set that to whatever the date and time is. It'll help keep track. Clear recordings. So this is going to clear all the history on the inverter. Um, you most likely don't want to do that unless you are wiping it clean. Password. If you're going to have your inverter in a very accessible location, usually outside or available for people um, to come by, then you want to make sure that you set a password that is not uh, the default of 0000. So this is where you can change that. Maintenance um, is a bunch of kind of internal settings, so we're not going to mess with those. And then we have factory set, which of course we don't want to do unless there's a, a big problem. We have setting 15, that's parallel. If you're going to be setting up multiple inverters in parallel, you want to go in there and set them up. And then finally, we have with the new firmware update, the generator setting. And we can go in here, start, stop, SOC. We can change the charge current to batteries, max runtime, cooldown, control, and power. So there's a lot of settings there with the new generator firmware update. And that is all the settings for the 8K EXP inverter and what you should choose. So we were just using the RS-485 communications with the 8K EXP because we had the Life Power 4 batteries hooked up. But now we need to prepare our LLV2 batteries. So we want to go in, we want to make sure that our dip switches are all set down so it is in the protocol changing configuration. Hold the back button for about five seconds and let go. That opens up its protocol settings. We can go down to the CAN protocol, enter, and we want to select PO4-MGR. So we select that, we go back out, we can turn off our battery, change it back to the master protocol, and this allows it to communicate with the selected BMS protocol to the inverter. So now we've done that, it's turning back on. We can run our communication cable to the EG4 8K, and now we need to go in here and change the settings. So I'm under default password is all zeros. We'll go down to bat setting, bat communications, and we want to select the CAN. We'll give it just a moment, sync back up, and it'll be running in CAN communications. So now we've waited a little bit and our error has cleared. We can go down to BMS parameters, 
and we will see that it is now communicating with our LLV2 battery bank. Your inverter is now ready and able to power loads. Remember to double check the polarity and torque of your connections, especially if you're going to be paralleling units. You may require an inspector to be able to use this inverter with the grid, and we always recommend contacting a licensed professional to make the electrical connections and check your system's safety. We hope you enjoyed watching our commissioning guide on the 8K EXP inverter. Leave a like and comment down below if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe so you can stay tuned for our latest. I'm Braden from EG4 Electronics, and I'll see you next time.